Thank you to Rocket Money for sponsoring today's video. Today, we're gonna go over the top five anti-ship cruise missiles in use today. These are the primary anti-ship weapons in modern naval warfare. Whether they're launched from air, ship, sub, or shore, anti-ship missiles are smart, stealthy, and effective tools of reducing fleet strength. Today's missiles are highly advanced, precise weapons that can target a warship over 100 miles away and hit vital areas on that ship. Extreme stealth on modern builds makes these fast-moving missiles difficult to target defensively. Pushed faster and higher by large rocket boosters, some modern anti-ship weapons reach speeds of more than Mach 8. The same way rocket money can help your money reach new heights. I recently signed up for Rocket Money and I love it. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that helps you cancel subscriptions, lower bills, and manage money better. The first thing I noticed is my Rocket Money app was all the monthly subscription services I had on it. Spending five to $15 per service quickly got real expensive. Some of my subscriptions were billed annually too and I had forgot about them. I was wasting money every year on once a year charges that came out of the blue. Rocket Money found these charges and provided me with a number of days countdown until the next charge. It's a great service that I took advantage of and it saved me a lot of money. Now, Rocket Money can lower your bills too. Simply upload a photo of your bill and after tapping a few buttons, Rocket Money will negotiate your bills for you. I've used this for internet bills and phone bills. Rocket Money is a service that works for you. Now, to save more money and spend less and join over the 5 million members using Rocket Money today, go to rocketmoney.com forward slash subbrief or click the link in the description to get started for free. Entering service in 2012 is Kongsberg's Naval Strike Missile and is being adopted by many NATO navies, including the United States, maybe our submarines too. The NSM features advanced stealth design to minimize detection. That's one of its key features. It's very hard to see this missile coming at you if you're just looking at the radar returns. It does have a range of about 115 miles. Its guidance system has to be robust because not only does it have to navigate high sea states, it's able to strike uh, land targets. And so it has to be able to get through terrain like that. Uh, the NSM uses image infrared to discriminate between targets in a fleet, allowing for precise targeting and high of a high value ship among lower value ships. Or if a ship is among commercial shipping, it will target the warship. It's smart enough to do that and not hit the civilian ship. That lowers collateral damage. Now, survivability is a big part of the NSM design, the Naval Strike Missile design. When the missile takes damage, its onboard flight computers can quickly compensate to keep the missile in the air so it doesn't spiral out of control. That's a big advantage of this. They've actually tested this by blowing off part of the wings in flight to see how it responds and it stays on target. The NSM is a very resilient missile. You have to literally destroy it to knock it uh, off, to off course. Uh, the flight profile is sea skimming as most of these uh, weapons are today. Uh, it can be retargeted in flight and is launched from a wide variety of platforms, including land-based launchers, which we saw in uh, Ukraine recently. Uh, the Russian ship Moskva was hit by at least two of these. It might have been more, we're not sure. And eventually the ship sunk the next morning due to the fire that caused the flooding and the crew evacuated and uh, was unable to dewater the ship and it sunk in the Black Sea. So the NSM has a successful combat record now and it's why it's on this list. Uh, the next missile is the Qadir missile. And this missile really is part of a family of missiles from the NOR to the uh, Quad Z Zero, which is the next evolution of this missile. But the Qadir is the missile that was really found by the special forces that went on board uh, one of those little ships, the Doze, and found this missile in pieces. So we know that this one specifically is being used by the Houthis to shoot down uh, or shoot at commercial shipping in the Red Sea. This is based on the Chinese C-802 cruise missile weapon system. It is uh, land-based. It has a mobile launcher capability like you see here. And it's capable, that truck is capable of quickly moving and hiding the missile and then bringing it out for whenever it wants to be used. The range for this particular model is 75 nautical miles, but it does have that Chinese advanced seeker head, which means that even when jammed, it has a greater than 50% or a likelihood of still hitting the target and how that happens is uh, is not public uh, but it's very effective apparently now the Qatar is on this list because it's seen action and is proven to work in the Red Sea theater 
and a, that's a theater that's defended by the United States Navy and our allies. And this missile is still getting to civilian ship and ships and hitting them like this one. The most recent ship that was targeted uh, by a missile out of Yemen uh, hit the rear end of the ship, the aft end of the ship. It set the bridge on fire, you can see up there at the very top. And what concerns me about this photo is there is also a fire on the deck. So there's a chance that that whole superstructure on the aft end of the ship that holds the, the electronics and the mechanical controls of the ship, including the crew, of course, um, are being burnt out. This ship was evacuated after the strike because sadly there were casualties on board. Well, as far as I know, it hasn't sunk yet, but we'll keep an eye on this ship because its predecessor, the Ruby Mar, has now sunk. We can confirm. This one was hit by a cruise missile uh, in the aft end of the ship at the engine room. Uh, there was likely a infrared or heat seeking uh, sensor that guided the missile towards that. And because it was sea skimming, it hit right at the water line, flooding the engine room immediately. Luckily, there were no casualties on board this except the ship itself. Uh, the ship sadly is full of fertilizer, tons and tons of fertilizer, and is now sitting on the bottom of the Red Sea. And if that ever leaches out, that's going to be a huge disaster for the region. Uh, but that's pretty low in everyone's priority, it seems, right now, because there's an active shooting war going on in the region. The next one on this list is the BrahMos. Uh, the BrahMos Aerospace is a joint venture between India's DRDO and Russia's military industrial complex. Uh, the BrahMos is a supersonic, the first supersonic anti-ship cruise missile we're talking about today, and, and it can hit both sea and land targets as you see here. Now, versions of this missile can be fired from sea, land, and even air units. Uh, its cruise speed is 2.8 Mach and has a range of 180 miles, pretty good range. Carries a 660 pound warhead that's large enough to destroy most ships, destroyer and below, just break them in half, so big. Uh, the guidance system uses a number of different systems that all work together. One is internal navigation, which most of these uh, missiles have. That just keeps it stable in flight and on track. It also uses GPS or GLONASS, which is the satellite navigation systems. And there is a radar seeker in the nose for terminal homing, the last phase of the flight uses radar seeker to home in on a target and hit it. So it's high performance, rapid reaction, high precision, and this gives India a significant technical advantage that, did, that they did not have before. So India is making great strides in becoming a completely independent and powerful military. The BrahMos is a big part of that. So much so that in 2018, China made a copy of it and they called it the M20 missile system. Uh, CX-1 is the name of the actual missile. The system together with the launcher and everything is, uh, is the M20 missile system. It is nearly identical in performance to the BrahMos. And it's not part of this list because you don't get co credit for copying someone else's work, China. No, this is an Indian weapon that China copied and to India's credit, it was copied because it's inexpensive to make and it works. Supersonic. Can it see in land targets? It's a good weapon. So congratulations to India. China stole your homework. All right, now the Zircon. Listen, if I didn't put this on this list, there would be riots in the streets. So the Russian Zircon missile is on this because it is an anti-ship missile. They did do an anti-ship test that's been confirmed. So this hypersonic cruise missile entered service in 2023. That's very recently. Uh, the Zircon has reached speeds between Mach 8 and Mach 9 during its 300 mile boost transit phase. And that's one. Of, this is one of the fastest missiles in the world right here at reaching those speeds. Uh, the guidance system is a combination of internal navigation, satellite navigation, and it does have some kind of radar homing at the end, but I don't know uh, anything about it. But apparently it, it does have a way to home in on the target right at the terminal stage of the flight. So uh, the missile, missile slows to supersonic speeds after its boost transit at Mach 8, Mach 9, and that's below Mach 5. And in that stage, it can make maneuvers and go around highly defended airspaces. It can even complicate uh, where the target is or where we think the target's gonna be uh, by going after one target and then at the last minute switching to another one, causing the defenses over here to be wasted as it goes to an, maybe a less defended target. It can do things 
things like all like that in flight. Uh, so the maneuverability is what makes this um, a very effective hypersonic weapon. Uh, if you add the transit phase, which is very fast hypersonic, to the terminal phase, which is supersonic, you get a range of just under 600 miles if you add those two together. Uh, this is both ship and submarine launched right now. They are working on an air launched one. I haven't seen any evidence of that being successful yet. But the Zarkon does mark a new era in hypersonic long range fires and Russia was first in getting it to work. So, you know, bravo to them. Uh, the Zircon is real. It works. Uh, luckily, they don't have a lot of them. That can be said. But that's changing every day. All right. Let's get to the United States. That's right, folks. The United States long-range anti-ship missile is here. Uh, it's been around for a while, but we don't promote this one because it's kind of our our, our ace in our hand, right? We This is the one we're going to slap down on the next Navy that gets a little uppity uh, with us. But we're going to talk about it today, and then we'll never speak of this thing again. Uh, this is called the Lorasm or the Long Range Anti-Ship Missile. It's a combined project between the United States Navy and the United States Air Force, and that's something in and of itself, getting these two branches to work together on something. But that's how important this thing is. It has a 250 nautical mile range. It is subsonic, but hold thyself. It is a stealth missile that is designed to be autonomous and can choose on its own, it doesn't have to, but on its own, a high value target after launch. It has AI embedded into it and it can choose its own target within parameters that are set before launch. So the last one is designed to not be detected at all and that's why it's on this list. No matter what you do, infrared search, radar search, you will not see this missile coming. This is the secret behind this missile. It's not its speed, it's not its maneuverability, it's not even its AI. It's invisible to everything but the naked eye. And the person that sees it coming is the target. He won't be around to tell anybody in just a few seconds. So it's extremely stealthy. It has a passive terminal homing capability. So even in its terminal phase, it doesn't project anything out that can be detected by the target. It does, however, have active terminal homing capability but we don't talk about that. That's super, a super secret. Now, the Lorasm can loiter for a short time above the target. It does have that kind of uh, speed and lift capability, but it's not as long as, say, loitering of a, of a drone. But this does give operational planners flexibility in amending targets in flight. And so you can update the target list, you can give it different parameters or a completely different target, and you can also tell it precisely where to go. You don't have to let it decide for itself. The fact that it can is one of its uh, great attributes. So the Lorasm is both an airborne and a Navy VLS launched from, and launched from planes uh, weapon. The B-1B bomber can launch this, the P-8A Poseidon, that's our maritime patrol aircraft can launch these. Even our small FA-18 fighters can launch these. And then any ship with a VLS can launch this as well. So the Lorasm is designed to enter contested airspace undetected and hit a target that is completely unaware despite looking for it. It won't see it. It's, it's on this list because of its survivability. And it doesn't have to maneuver at supersonic speeds or do anything hypersonic at Mach 8. It just hits the target. Uh, it hits the target unaware in a contested space. It's a fantastic weapon system that we intentionally don't talk about. But what we do talk about is Rocket Money, right? Take control of your finances today. Go to rocketmoney.com forward slash subbrief and get started for free. And if you would like to know more about how cruise missile attacks are changing naval warfare, watch this video right here.